Ani, Bojo, Mashke Kene Bikoy and Dishnakaz, Mizike and Dodem, Six Nations, Misagi Kandinjaba. So, what I said is uh, my spirit name, which is Medicine Water, and I'm Turtle Clan, originally from Six Nations of the Grand River, as well as matricial ties to the Mississaugas of Credit First Nation. So, I identify as both Ongohongwe as well as Anishinaabe, and my English name is Lindsay Lickers. And currently, I am the Community Safety Liaison for the Ontario Native Women's Association. And I'm also a practicing Indigenous artist. As I mentioned, my role with the Ontario Native Women's Association as the Community Safety Liaison earlier, uh, basically what I'm doing within that agency is uh, prior to going to ANWA, I had done frontline crisis intervention work in the community and I managed a crisis team in Toronto. Essentially what we did is we supported Indigenous women who were facing sexual violence, uh, were entrenched in gang involvement or human trafficking and wanted to exit. Uh, so essentially I did that job so well <laughs> that uh, Ontario Native Women's Association wanted me to join them to train other people in the province to do that work better. This year, actually it's going on one year now, uh, I've been a Indigenous advisor for Steps Public Art. And in the past uh, couple years, I've done programming with them as well. So they invited me to come on as an advisor because they're looking to expand into some, not just provincial roles, but also um, across the country, um, but also looking into, you know, bigger opportunities for Indigenous placemaking, uh, including more Indigenous artists and wanting to really do that work from an intentional place. In addition to that, I also sit on the Indigenous advisory for the Toronto Arts Council. And from that role, I was invited to join the Toronto Arts Council Board of Directors. So I'm currently on there for this year, and this turns my first term. And essentially what we're doing there is really doing that advocacy piece for uh, artists in Toronto, GTA, um, but more that advocacy, right? You know, talking to uh, government and different people, different stakeholders, really encouraging you know, the place and purpose and need for the arts uh, as a really vital component to our society. Uh, I also have in my own art practice, uh, I'm a practicing traditional Indigenous artist as well as contemporary artist. Um, traditional is specifically referring to uh, traditional craft, so beadwork, leatherwork, um, ceremonial bundle items, right, making some of our ceremonial pieces as well as a contemporary because I also am an, I'm a graduate of OCAD U. Uh, so I actually was trained in more of contemporary practice. So I do painting, printmaking, photography, a little bit of printmaking. Oh, I think I said printmaking. Um, yeah, I do a lot of different things, but pre predominantly painting. My Indigenous heritage is a vital component to pretty much everything I do. Um, I think that that is also a very specifically defined methodology as it is in Indigenous worldview generally. Um, there's a general understanding that everything is intersectional, everything's interconnected. Uh, so I've often been told and been encouraged from other artists that are not Indigenous to basically, you should focus just on your art, right? And maybe not do the social work and do all these other things. Um, but for me, uh, one can't really exist without the other. And a lot of the work that I do in terms of painting as an, and as an artist um, is really speaking about, you know, our traditional teachings is talking about ceremony. It's talking about some of the issues that we face, right, as Indigenous people uh, in this time. So for me, if I'm not participating in community, I'm not giving and giving and helping community, I don't really have anything to make work from. So that's why the art would cease to exist. Art is part is a huge part of reconciliation. It's definitely not the only, but for myself and my own practice and you know, having done reconciliation, I say reconciliation arts, reconciliation action arts, uh, with places like Steps and places like uh, Art Starts in Toronto and a lot of other organizations. Um, but basically the why it's so integral is art can Art is accessible to a lot of different people. It's not just the people that are, you know, practicing artists that are in the industry. You know, art is applicable to every single person that you meet. And it's also a really great entry point, at least for myself, when we're talking about reconciliation, to for people to express themselves and really visually represent what they've learned from those sessions and learned about the topic. The role of visual storytelling from an Indigenous perspective is very different. You'll see it differently from uh, different cultures. For ours specifically, 
Uh, our storytellers, you know, we have a long line of storytelling as a way to be able to track history, track specific instructions of how we're to live on the land and, and live with it and thrive with it. Also how we're to relate to one another. Um, and we have a lot of different visual ways that we capture that. Sometimes some nations will use wampum belts as a way to track that. Others you'll see someone similar to like petroglyphs that are in Peterborough, right? That's like the rock painting. Um, that's kind of where the foundation of visual culture from an indigenous perspective comes from. So it's really interlinked with a responsibility within the community to carry on history and to carry on and help people remind people about you know how they're to relate with one another and relate with the earth. So actually it's a really big responsibility as a visual storyteller uh, to ground and root that. And over time what's been really great is that it actually has changed and places like OCAD have actually been integral in supporting that change as well, uh, especially because they now have the Indigenous Visual Culture Program, right? They have a whole program that's dedicated just to supporting artists to do that and to do that actualization work. So my interest in reviving and restoring Indigenous craft really came from the fact that, traditionally speaking, prior to colonization, uh, I would have learned these things like beading and leather work, uh, you know, creating like bundle items and things like that of that nature. I would have learned that from my grandmother or my mother or my aunties. But because of colonization, uh, none of my, the women in my families had those skills. So when I went to OCAD, one of the main things that I was trying to do with my time there was explore reclamation of culture and reclamation of identity. So for me, that was my whole thesis, was basically me going and learning these things. And the way that I learned actually was through taking something apart and putting it back together. So I actually am self-taught. I didn't have anybody that taught me. But what's really beautiful about that and why it's so important is that now myself as my generation, right, I'm young in, in terms of my family, but I'm the one now that's teaching my mother and teaching my grandmother how to do these things. So in a sense, it's kind of like, um, you know, reclaiming that within, you know, the family line, but also it's a way of healing from that intergenerational trauma. The skills I learned at OCAD, it was, it was a lot. Um, I will definitely say I can, 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 I can say that with confidence that uh, even just like the basic, um, you know, evaluative qualities, critical thinking, like I use critical thinking constantly within my job as a, as a safety liaison, as well as even when I was doing frontline work. So it may, people may not see the connection between arts and like social work, but there's a connection between the skills that you would get at OCAD with a lot of different things. And then also uh, I use, because my whole goal was originally to be doing art therapy. So I in turn ended up doing that anyway with the combination of my education at OCAD and then my own reclamation process of picking up these traditional skill sets, right, from my community and basically bringing that type of healing to different communities across the province. That's basically what I do in my job. So it's really great. And I have done that with other places as well in Toronto. I worked with at-risk youth for a really long time, supporting them and exploring and reclaiming culture and starting to understand their own identity through art. So even though I didn't go the traditional route of to get there, um, I still achieved what it was I wanted to do. It just, you know, and OCAD was a really integral part of me having that step there. I would say to any youth that are thinking of a creative career, and I would say especially to Indigenous youth, of course, um, but any youth as well, um, you know, if we look to our creation stories, uh, and they're different from nation to nation, but the general principle is that all of us incarnate here on the earth with specific skills, with specific, specific talents and gifts that contribute to the circle. And if one's absent, then our circle isn't as strong. So if you're not doing and fulfilling what it is that you feel is your role and your passion in life, then we're missing out on that and that makes our circle weaken. So it doesn't really matter in terms of, you know, what other people may think, what you're bringing to the table is equally as important as anybody else.